one more time. Hey there, audio people, Mr. Eric here. I've got a pretty interesting headphone for you today, and this is the RAL CA1A ribbon headphone system. I tried the RALs back a while ago, the ones that kind of like sit on your head, like ear speaker type things, and those were pretty interesting. I didn't really care for them because they were a little bit different, um, and they didn't quite, you know, just, it felt funny using them. These are much more of a typical like headphone form factor, but they're still uh, pretty unique in how they operate and uh, also how they sound. And that's a good thing. Okay, so uh, let's dig into these guys. As usual, we'll look at, you know, what does it come with? Um, what's the build like? What's it like to use? And then, of course, we'll talk about the all important sound. So let's dive in and see what you get with this guy. All right, so I kind of just have things laid out here. Um, I'm not gonna open up the packaging, just I didn't, didn't wanna deal with it. It's nothing super special, it's fine. It's a nice little package, okay, but um, here's what's interesting, right? You've got the headphones, you've got a headphone cable, that's normal stuff. What's interesting is this thing. This is the TI-1B, I believe, and this is uh, like the transformer that takes a regular headphone amp and you plug it into either the 32 or 16 ohm inputs and then the headphone cable comes out of this spot right here, okay? So this thing, um, I don't really know what all technical wizardry is going on in here. I couldn't find a lot in the manual about it, um, but here's how I had it hooked up. Okay, so just to show you how to hook this thing up, um, I mean, it's not like it's super complicated or anything, but basically you've got a 32 ohm high Z input or a 16 ohm low Z input. Now, I don't quite understand exactly what or why you would use either one of these. I mean, I'm sure there's some rhyme or reason to it that I didn't see in the materials, but I am using it out of my liquid platinum and I'm using it into the 32 ohm input and that has been what I found to sound the best. I tried it with the 16 and didn't think it sounded that great. I don't really have any other amps that put out enough power or are balanced to uh, use them. So this is mine. And then you just have ribbon headphone out and that just is your headphone cable that goes to the headphones. Okay, so in addition to that, you've got just the little cable that connects this to your amplifier. These are just like regular, as far as I can tell, XLR cables. And then you've got the headphone cable. This thing's about five feet long, uh, perfect length in my opinion. It's like a dual kind of, it's not really braided, but it's just like twisted cable. I mean, I'm. it's fine. I didn't have any issues with it. It doesn't tangle. Um, it's all good. It's all good, right? Uh, okay, so that's that. Then you get uh, a couple of sets of pads. Now these pads are kind of interesting in that they're like exposed foam. So there's no sort of, it's memory foam, but there's no sort of like leather or pleather of lure or anything on the outside of them. It came with these kind of solid uh, ones here. And then it came with these like split ones here if you can see that and these guys um they just kind of pop off they're just on like a sheet of plastic and that you just kind of bend it and pop it in and there's like a couple of ridges in there that they uh slot into and it all works i mean it all works fine like it works just the way you think it would but just it's kind of weird the way these pads just aren't super tight here again i didn't have any problems with it but just when i first opened it up like i thought this was actually like packaging is kind of just where it's at so i feel like just in general the vibe of this headphone is just it's more of like in my mind like a prototype like a, a, a fairly you know advanced prototype but it still seems kind of more like a prototype to me than a finished product. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. I didn't have any, I didn't have any like negative experiences with the build or anything. It just doesn't 
quite feel like it's got the same manufacturing techniques going into it as like your typical consumer headphone, you know? The materials are very interesting um, and I haven't seen anything really like it. So you got like this guy right here, this is like some sort of like a, a polycarbonate or something shell on this and you can see it's kind of got some interesting angles and stuff. It looks like, I would say like a, like a really high quality 3D print almost, you know? And then of course you've got the, the ribbon in there and then you've got that interesting kind of like foam pad on there. Um, you can see, I mean, it's, it's not that it's not well finished. It just doesn't look like it uses typical, you know, manufacturing techniques, you know, you got some spring steel up here. You can see again, like the twist and stuff. It just, it works fine. It, it looks a little DIY to me. Um, and same with the headband, right? It's very, it's leather headband feels nice. Uh, again, though, it just it, there's a couple of notches here for adjustment, and I didn't have any problems with it. It just feels a little, you know, prototypey to me, and that's okay. It's cool. I mean, it's it's comfortable, and this is where I think, this is why I think I'm I'm into this is because I tried those other rows, and while they didn't sound terrible, they were just weird to use, and I I just wasn't really into that like speakers sitting on your head thing that they were going for so i'll link to that re review below if you want to check it out these i was much more comfortable just wearing them using them it's it's pretty much like once you get everything plugged in it's just it's just regular like using any other headphone that you'd use which is i guess what i like i mean not that those head speaker things aren't interesting and i do kind of like that you can like angle them and things like that but it just it just wasn't for me um, uh, so, uh, what else do you need to know? The cable is 3.5 millimeter goes into there. I love that they did it that way. Not that you can use this thing with like, I don't know, lots of other amps and stuff like that. I mean, it's a pretty unique setup and you know, the cable here is not typical, right? So like usually you have male XLR going into an amplifier. So I think they have this set up this way. So you don't try to like plug it in to a, just a regular amp or something like that is what I would imagine, which is smart. I appreciate that they did it that way. So build, comfort, all that, it's all good. I, I don't have any complaints about it. Like I said, it feels a little prototypey. If that scares you off, I mean, this probably isn't for you, but I using it, I feel like they're sturdy, they're strong. I wouldn't be worried about it at all as far as like build and things go. Oh, hi, Wally. What can I do you for? Hmm? Oh, sorry, kitty issues. Okay, where were we? I think we were just about to sound is what we were gonna talk about here. Um, so, these are pretty good, I think. Um, they are string masters. Like, when I first listened to them, that was immediately what jumped out to me is just how lively these things sound, especially with things like string instruments, um, you know, piano keys. Oh, God, there's just like a sizzle. There's like a life and a sizzle to those that just really drew me in. Um, so I really enjoyed them for that. And, you know, what was cool, and this is, I think, going to be a new thing because I did it with my Elite review and then I did it with these, is I put it out there and I say, this is what I've got. What do you want me to listen to? And I get you know, comments of songs and boy, that's been a lot of fun for me to just have people like comment songs for me to try, um, and to try those out. So that's mainly what I did for this. And I'll put a playlist of all the songs that people recommended down below, but, uh, needless to say with acoustic string instruments, these things are masters. Like they are excellent for that super lively just the, the timbre on the stringed instruments and stuff is just so good and just it has um like an ethereal quality to it to where it's not like super weighty i wouldn't say that they lack for low end but it just there's just like a crispness to it that just i don't know it's very it's very nice it has you know, good imaging across the board. Uh, bass is present. It's it's not like, they're definitely not bass heavy, but they're also, 
not too light either. I kind of feel like these have like a, a like an electrostat vibe to them as far as just kind of that way they're just they're pretty fast and crisp and um, and they do that really well and they do like the imaging really well I think because they're they're so fast they they get that spatial information correct they're not huge sounding but they're they don't leave me wanting for really much of anything when I'm listening to them if I'm being honest I think I think the details there, the timbre would maybe be the area that I feel like is the weak point on these. Not that it's bad, but when I was going back and forth from this to the Maze Elites or from this to the Verite Open, I did feel like there was something there that wasn't just quite as right as those other headphones sound. Um, and you know they're all, they're all in the same ballpark for price. I think, I think one of the other issues that I had with that in that first row, the SR1A or, or I think that's what it was called, is it was like three thousand dollars, and then the amp was like two thousand dollars, and I don't know. It was just it was a lot for that whole system. These guys are I think about twenty six hundred bucks retail for the headphones and the TI1A. You can buy the headphones just for two thousand themselves and then use them with, I don't know, something else. I think at that price, I really feel like these are uh, in competition with with the other headphones um, that I've mentioned here. I could certainly see somebody wanting these in their collection just for when they wanna jam out on some string heavy stuff. Like, I think that they're that good that if you've got money like that to burn where you can own multiple headphones that are worth thousands of dollars, which admittedly is quite a, a few people. I mean, not quite a few, excuse me, very few people. Um, and that's not me either. So I don't know that I would recommend these as being like a do it all headphone, like my one headphone system. I'm not sure that I could make that recommendation, but I think they would be a good compliment, complimentary set to something like the elites or the verite open um where those are like richer you know fuller bodied headphones and then this would be something like that you would have as an alternative or maybe this would be like an alternative to like a stacks like this would go i i, I haven't tried any high-end stacks i've got i did my review on my um you know 300 and the energizer that goes with that and i think that's great i I'd be very interested to try some higher end stacks and I would imagine that I hope honestly that this is kind of what they would sound like I don't know so I guess I I kind of really like these things um I don't know that they're for me personally um but certainly I think they do a nice job for what they do I think they're overall just ergonomically and comfort and all that they're an improvement over the SR1A that I tried so I much prefer this and I honestly feel like the sound is improved too. At least it fits my taste better, um, but maybe that's just part of the user experience and things like that. So I really like them. I think, I, I, I don't think they're like the end all be all, but I do think they do some stuff very, very right. And they're a very engaging listen. I would not overlook them if you're in the market. And if you love stringed instruments, I would not overlook these. I think they, I think they do that very, very well, very well. Um, let's see, sorry. I probably should talk more about the rest of the frequency response. We talked about bass, we talked about strings, talked about vocal timbre. The highs, I, they're sparkly, they're good, they're nice. Good detail. I didn't feel like, I never felt like I was lacking with them. And I said that before, I just feel like they, they do everything reasonably well. I did for me, like I did pull back with my Lokius. I pulled back 2K and, what is it, 6K? I think 2K and 6K frequency response. Just, a, I mean, like 15 degrees back, I pulled it um, with these guys. And that just made it, it tamed them just a little bit. There's a lot of sizzle going on up there. And that's fun. But I think for long term, maybe just a little bit of EQ fits me a little bit better. But yeah, that being said, I don't know. I, I was impressed and I didn't come into these thinking I'd like them all that much because I, I didn't like the other Rowls all that much, but I'm, I'm leaving these impressed. 
these are something that I like realistically will keep my eye open for on the used market. If I could pick them up for a very reasonable price, I might go for it. All right. I don't know. You tried these things yet? Uh, what do you think of them? How do they compare to other things in like this $2,000 ish price range, right? Like 2000, 2500. Do you think they compete? I certainly do. Um, I, again, I don't know if they'd be my daily drivers, but they definitely, they definitely do some a lot, right? Uh, as always, I thank you for your time. I appreciate you being here. Uh, please like subscribe, do all that stuff that helps the channel out. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.